Is there anyone who hasn't heard or know about Leonardo da Vinci? If you search up most famous geniuses in history on Google, his name would always be there. Often being labeled as the original Renaissance man, Leonardo was not only an artist, he was also an engineer, scientist, theorist, anatomist, and architect. Many claim that he was the smartest man to ever live and his life and works are a captivating puzzle filled with hidden messages, unsolved mysteries, and mind-blowing inventions that change our world today. Before we get started, I'd like to inform you that this video is gonna be divided into two parts, so stay tuned for the next part so you can truly understand the journey of our Renaissance genius. Leonardo was born out of wedlock in a farmhouse outside of Anciano in Tuscany, Italy on April 15, 1452. His father, San Piero, was a successful attorney and notary, while his mother, Caterina, was a peasant woman. Leonardo later grew up in his father's family estate, where he received later formal education, such as reading, writing, and arithmetic. His artistic talent, however, were evident from an early age as he showed a remarkable ability in drawing and sketching. His father, who appreciated his talent, later brought him to Andrea del Verrocchio, who was the leading Florentine painter and sculptor, to be his apprentice in his workshop. Throughout his apprenticeship, Leonardo learned everything he could from Verrocchio and gradually worked his way up from doing menial tasks around the workshop to studying and help Verrocchio in producing his artwork. In addition to painting, drawing, and sculpting, he was also introduced to many skills such as metalwork, anatomy, engineering, chemistry, drafting, and mechanic. These foundations were crucial in making him the multifaceted artist and inventor he later became. In 1475, Leonardo began to rise in fame due to his contribution to one of Verrocchio's work in Baptism of Christ, where Leonardo painted the young angel holding Jesus' robe, which the face and hair have a light, graceful quality, unlike the other figures in the painting. Many believed that Verrocchio was so impressed with Leonardo's work on the angel that he grew ashamed of his own talent and swore never to paint again. In the year 1476, Leonardo had his own workshop, but unfortunately, it didn't go so well. Apparently, Leonardo only accepted works that he was excited about. He wasn't afraid to leave employers waiting while he found the right way to approach a piece of work or ignore them altogether if the work they wanted him to do was uninspiring. Another factor was because his interests were so broad and often compelled by new subjects especially in scientific and engineering, resulting many art projects he received was left unfinished, and one of the works was the adoration of the Magi, commissioned by the monks of San Donato in Scopetto. Later on in the year 1481, Leonardo came to his patron Lorenzo de' Medici, asking him for help because he seek for more challenges. Lorenzo, who recognized his developing genius, then sent Leonardo to his ally Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan, where he can offer greater opportunities for Leonardo to explore his engineering and scientific interests alongside artistic pursuit. Leonardo arrived in Milan in the year 1482, and the city was ruled by Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan. It was here that Leonardo managed to reach the heights of scientific and artistic achievement. He produced some of his greatest works and enriched the city with his versatile genius. Leonardo first introduced himself to the court as military engineer, architect, sculptor, painter, and musician. Yes, you heard that right. Leonardo was also a gifted musician and it proved by his performances that enchanted the Milanist court. The Duke later kept Leonardo busy by assigning him to paint and designing elaborate court festivals. Some of the great artworks he produced were Virgin of the Rocks and The Last Supper. Leonardo later became one of the top artists in Milan and he had his own workshop with lots of apprentices. His most notable students were Ambrogio de Predis, Francesco Melzi, and Salai. 
Besides being an artist, Leonardo also served as a technical advisor and engineer by designing weapons, buildings, and machinery. The Duke also allowed Leonardo to deepen his scientific studies and investigations, especially in advanced weapons such as tank, combat devices, submarines, and flying machines. For his anatomy studies, the Duke also granted him to perform human body dissection that allowed Leonardo to create some of the most detailed and accurate anatomical drawings, bridging the gap between art and science. He recorded all of his studies in notebooks filled with sketches, calculations, and handwritten remarks that became treasure to art historians. Leonardo also got the chance to meet Luca Pacioli, a young mathematician, and together they explored the mysteries of proportion, leading to the development of the divine proportion or the golden ratio that would significantly influence Renaissance art and architecture. Leonardo's time in Milan ended in the year 1499, when Milan faced an invasion by France, and Ludovico Sforza was cornered by the French assault and finally fell from power. With the loss of his patron and his sanctuary crumbled, Leonardo sought refuge to Venice, then later on back to Florence in 1500. Well, that's the part one of the video. In the next chapter, we're gonna discuss the life of Leonardo during his second period in Florence, where we're gonna dive more into his artistic and scientific achievements that will continue to inspire and captivate the world centuries later. Thank you for watching and see you in part two.